Well, we've managed to catch up with our Ellies. We found them, and are you going to come and feed off the bush right in front of the car? Yes, you are. So, if you don't believe me that the car is there, that's where our elephant is eating from, isn't this cool? There's nothing better than being this close to an Ellie. As long as you don't eat the car, we're all good. <laughs> Well, yes, so I believe James was saying that I found a Grevy's zebra, and of course, we know James is talking utter rubbish because the Grevy's zebra only occur up in East Africa. And one person, well, actually, I have seen a Grevy's zebra before, but one other person who's seen a Grevy's zebra would be Scott. And I know Scott absolutely loves the Grevy's zebra. They are a beautiful species. They've got big ears and those beautiful, fine pinstripes. Very, very pretty animals. But isn't this amazing? This elephant is literally feeding basically underneath the car it's it's taking branches that are growing sitting just underneath the left side of the car and so like I say you think that I'm joking when I say that that is close but if I were to be sitting on the front of the car that elephant would basically be touching my feet that's how close it is to that front edge so really is quite something I didn't think she would come wandering over to this area she was quite far away actually and she just decided this is where she wanted to come and feed thank you for that that was very special I'm going to just feed next to us instead now, if that's okay. That's a far more comfortable distance to have. You can actually see our shadows. Senzo, wave to everybody. Mary Kay, you say so nice, not bothered at all by us. I know, Mary Kay, that uh, was probably one of the closest in terms of feeding behavior that I've ever had. Normally with Ellie's, they don't feed that close. They will come to this area and they will sort of sniff you out and come and check and they'll check out the car and they'll smell and whatever but to actually feed at that distance is really quite something so that was incredibly special and I believe a lot of the team in the Mara are saying how much they miss these intimate Ellie sightings that we get here in the sands and well I know it is super special we were talking about it yesterday and you know we've had some incredible Ellie sightings in the last week Tara had some and I've had some it's just been insane with them all around the car and being so relaxed it really is very 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 cool and we get a little bit sort of blasé about it which is not the right way to be is you know it's when you sit in there's ellies all around and you've got an ellie sniffing you like that it's, it's kind of got to take a moment and actually just realize how fortunate we are and how super lucky we are to spend time in amongst these big giants and that they're so relaxed with us it is a very, very cool situation. So hopefully all of you at home are loving it just as much as Senzo and I are. Now, interestingly, there's an elephant over here. Now, this elephant is quite a older elephant. It's probably, I would say now, must be about what's it, eight or nine years old, maybe a little bit younger, seven maybe, seven or eight. But look there, no tusks that you can see coming out. So this individual is tuskless. It does not have any tusks growing. And this is something that we've been seeing more and more of over the last few years, <clears throat> particularly from the females. And there tends to be a lot of female elephants that carry this gene that they don't grow tusks at all. Now, there's a lot of theories as to why they don't have tusks and I personally am not 100% sure of which theory I actually believe. I don't think any of them really ring true just yet and there will be a reason for it. I have a funny feeling it might be something to do with diet or with some sort of nutrient deficiency that they have that when they are growing inside of the mother that they get a little bit of an issue and they don't actually grow those tusks properly. That's something like that. I don't know if they maybe because a lot of people are saying that they're evolving against hunting to not produce tusks but then you would see it in male offspring as well where as it's only in the females and we know that the females don't use their tusks nearly as much to defend themselves so it could be something to do with that now Leslie wondering how much their trunks weigh in an adult male elephant the trunk will weigh 300 pounds of just pure muscle so that's how heavy the trunk is which is absolutely amazing when you think that it's just a basically a modified nose for it to weigh 300 pounds imagine having a 300 pound nose that would be quite an unfortunate problem to deal with but in the elephant world being the size that they are it is most certainly anything but a hindrance it is perfect for them to sustain themselves and to survive they're able to use it to drink to eat to even defend themselves somewhat are you also going to come say hello you lot are very relaxed. Hello. And off she goes. <laughs> so cool. 
Suma, you're wondering how many species of elephants there are in Africa. Well, there's just one, the African elephant, but there is a subspecies, which is known as, well, two subspecies, the desert and the forest elephant. And then you've got the savanna elephant, so I suppose three subspecies under the general banner of an African elephant, but only one actual species of animal and then the subspecies that are dictated by their environment that they spend most of their time in. There we go. There's another screenshot for James. Quickly, everybody, capture that and tag James Hendry. There we go. That will fill him with delight, I'm sure. I feel like James is going to probably be quite upset with me at some point if we just keep flooding his whole Twitter page with all kinds of pictures of animals defecating, but, well, it will be worth a laugh anyway. So it's just the one species, and then, like I say, according to area and small little changes that they have, so the forest elephants being much smaller, as well as the desert elephants, then what you see in these savannah elephants allows them to then become a subspecies, but it's just the African elephant itself. The only other species of elephant in the world is the Asian elephant, which obviously occurs in India and through Sri Lanka and parts of Indonesia as well. So that's the two species in their distribution range. Interesting that there wasn't an elephant species in South America or in the Americas, or should we just say in the Americas as general. It would surprises me that there wasn't one that developed in those areas or habit was in sort of the big vastness. If you think about how much space that is in the big jungles of South Interesting. Well, I'm certainly not complaining that we're the ones that have got them. Now, our herd has drifted off slightly, so I'm going to try and just get back towards where they are and back into the front of them so we can watch them coming again. 